Hello, I'm Noah Rogen from the Epic Online Learning Team, and I'm here with a tutorial on the car racing game mode in UEFN. What's a car racing game mode? It's anything you want, really. For example, we can set up a race where we go from point A to point B as quickly as possible, avoiding obstacles in the way. Or maybe it's a race around a circuit with multiple laps. It could even be a deathmatch style race where the last racer each lap loses and gets eliminated. We're going to start off by making a simple game mode utilizing the car racing setup devices, and then you can go from there. Do note that during this tutorial, we'll be jumping over to slides like you can see here that will show you the properties on devices that you'll need to change. If you don't see a property listed on this slide, go ahead and keep that property at its default value. We're going to start by choosing an island template, and I want something a little visually appealing, so I'm going to pick the Wasteland Island. You can go with whatever template you'd like, and then save it wherever you want. We are going to design a simple circuit for us to race around, so we can learn the device usage inside of UEFN for this game mode. The first thing we're going to do is configure our island settings. In the outliner, search for island. With our island settings device selected, let's set up our properties. Now with those settings changed, Let's go ahead and build our track. You can, of course, use any of the props built into UEFN, or import your own. Me, personally, I'm just going to use some of the racetrack galleries that are built into UEFN. In the Fortnite folder, under the Galleries folder, we have a Props folder. If we scroll down, we can find the racetrack galleries. You can see I have racetrack galleries A through I. I'm going to be using those to build my track. Feel free to build your track however you'd like. I'm going to make a simple circular track in order to race around the track points. And we're back. I went ahead and created a simple little circuit. I made a little bit of a ramp just for fun. Let's go ahead and set up our player spawns. Earlier, we set up our island settings to only have two max players, so we need two player spawns. Since I am using one of the pre-made islands, it doesn't come with any player spawn devices already in it. So in order to add them, we'll need to go into the Fortnite Devices folder, look for player spawn, and then drag two of these player spawners onto our island. This is where the player will spawn when they enter into the island, and then we'll be transporting them into the vehicle for the race itself. Let's set up the property on our player spawners. The properties are the same for both of our player spawners except the team index will be different, one for each of our two different teams. Here we can see I have my player spawners set up, one for team one and one for team two. That's going to be important because when we activate our vehicles, we're going to assign them based on the team number. Speaking of vehicles, let's set up our pickup truck spawners. This will be the starting point for our race. Let's find our pickup truck spawners in our Fortnite devices folder drag them onto the island, and drop them behind the start line. Let's rotate them so they're going the correct direction when we start. Next, let's set up the device properties for the pickup truck spawners. Remember, inside of UEFN, we can select both of the items to change the common properties between them at the same time. These are the settings that I'm going to use for my personal gameplay. Feel free to change these to match whatever your needs are. And now that our settings are changed, one thing we have to keep in mind is we have to have one with team index set to one and the other set to team index two. So make sure those values are changed if you set them up at the exact same time. While we're here, let's rename them as well to vehicle one spawner and vehicle two spawner to make them easier to find later. Now that we have our trucks set up, our players will be able to spawn in and drive our trucks. However, we want to put them right in the trucks when the game starts so they never run around as players. To do that, however, we need to set it up so that way when a player spawns in, it assigns them as a driver to the appropriate truck. With our first vehicle selected, let's set up the Assigns Driver function. Click on the Assigns Driver Add Array Element button, and then click on the drop-down arrow and look for our first player spawner. We'll notice a big issue. I forgot to name the player spawners. Now I can guess which one's which, or I can go and try and find it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eyedropper to pick the actor from the scene. Make sure to pick the first one. Now we're going to set the event to trigger on player spawn, and then do the exact same thing for our second vehicle spawner. Assign the driver to our second player spawner, 
and then set it to trigger on player spawn. Now, when our players spawn in, they'll automatically be assigned to those vehicles when the trucks spawn in. Let's go ahead and play test and make sure everything's at least working for now. We've dropped into our edit session. We'll start the game and the gameplay should start. You can see our player spawned into the player one start and then was immediately assigned to the vehicle. We can drive the vehicle around our track. Now that we have the basic setup, let's get the actual racing part for our scoring and checkpoints working next. Now we need to set up our race checkpoints and our race manager. Under our devices, if we search for race, we can find the race checkpoints and the race manager. I'm just going to drag out the race manager since I'm already here and put it off to the side. We're going to set it up in a little bit. But our race checkpoints are what we actually care about right now. Let's place the first one where we're going to set up our start point for the race. These are what we use to set up our starting line, each of the checkpoints in the middle of our race, and the finish line of our race. You can also use these to set up different laps in the race itself. With every one of these that you drag in, you're going to want to set a few different settings on it. Since we're inside the editor, we can easily create one and then duplicate it around the rest of our track. Go ahead and configure the properties that you can see here, and then we'll move on. With the first checkpoint configured, I'm going to resize it to make it a little bit bigger. So that way, when the players are playing, they can easily see the checkpoint from a distance. I'm also going to center it on the track. Then, I'm going to go around my track and duplicate this checkpoint into different points to make sure that my player has to go around the whole track that we built. Remember, you can hold down the ALT key and drag to make duplicates, and then place them in different points along your track. Try to place them in different points where the player will have to go through them in order to get to the next part of the track. With our race checkpoints set up, we need to make sure that they are designed to go in order from the first one to the last one. When we click on the checkpoints, we can see they're marked with a checkpoint number. We want them to go in order. So my next point, I'll change to 2, and then continue along the path. That way, all of my checkpoints are set up properly. You'll notice as I did this, UEFN went ahead and actually put the number on the checkpoint, so I can see it at a glance, along with the finish line. Now, if we were to go ahead and play test this, we're not really going to get what we expect. We need to set up the race manager, because the race manager is going to let our game mode know that we're going to be racing, and what type of race it is. This is where we can set the number of laps. In this case, I'm just going to be doing one for testing, and then whether you want the game to start automatically. I'm going to set this to false, because we're going to set this up in a timed objective, allowing our players to have a little bit of time before they start racing. Let's create a time objective device. You can find it under the Fortnite Devices folder. I'll drag one in and put it next to my Race Manager. Now let's set up the properties for our timed objective device. With those settings input, let's go back to our Race Manager and tell it to start when our timed objective finishes. Under User Options Functions, there's a Start Race parameter. We'll use our picker to select our timed objective device. We'll also want to set it to Uncompleted. Now, when the timed objective completes, the race will start. We also need an end to the race, so let's look for an end game device. Drag and drop the end game device onto the island. Now we're going to set up the end game device to activate once the race is completed. Under the activate event, we're going to activate the end game device when our race manager announces the race is done. Select the race manager and then change the drop down to on the race completed. Now, when our race is completed, it'll trigger an end game. With that done, let's do another playtest. We'll push our changes and start our game. We should drop in and see our timer now. And we can go in and actually start racing. That's a problem, we can start racing early. That's actually a little bit of an unfair advantage if the other player doesn't know. But first, let's make sure the rest of our map works. Then we'll fix the ability to start too soon. Let's hop back into UEFN and stop our players from starting early. In order to do so, we're going to use a barrier device. After locating them in the Devices folder, drag a barrier device over each of the vehicle's starting points. Now let's set up the barriers properly using these settings. With the property set up, let's make sure we set up both barriers to disable themselves once our timed objective is complete. We can select both of our barrier devices, go down to the Disabled parameter, and choose our timed objective. Then set the condition to when it is completed. Our barriers should now disable automatically. Let's push our changes and do one final test. 
We should be able to start our race, but not leave the starting area until the timer has finished counting down. We should spawn back into our vehicles, and now we're stuck inside the barriers until the timer goes down. The timer ends, the barriers drop, and the race begins. We can now race against our friends. There we go. You now have the basics of a car racing game mode. You have all the tools available to you in UEFN in order to make your custom car racing game mode experience. I would recommend going to the documentation website for UEFN and looking at the Build a Game Car Racing section. It's a great place to look up additional information on what you can do to customize your car racing game mode. In addition, Epic Games has Fortnite creative templates that you can copy, make your own, and then bring them into UEFN like you can see here. This is the Car Racing Starter Template, which you can see is configured for four players. It has nice text to give you information on what all the different devices do, as well as more advanced options and features that you can play with, disassemble, and learn from. We can't wait to see what you're going to create with UEFN, so please make sure to share with us on social media. And don't forget to visit the Epic Developer Community for more learning content.